Hi there, in this video I'll be walking you through how to deploy a Ruby on Rails application to render. In order to get started, I expect that you'd at least have a Rails application hosted on GTOB and a render account. If you do not have a render account, please head over to render.com to create one. Let's get into it. After you set up your render account, simply log into your dashboard, then click on the new button and click on web service. Then it's going to ask you whether you want to deploy from a JIT repository or an existing uh, image from a registry. Simply stick to the option to build and deploy from a JIT repository. Then click on next. Then it's going to ask you to connect to your repository, whether GitHub or GitLab. In this case, I'm using GitHub, so I'm going to click on connect GitHub. So, Render is about to get installed into your GitHub account. And if you have multiple accounts like I do, you have to select the account you want to configure Render for. So click on Configure. Then, of course, you need to authorize this particular request. And I'm going to be using GitHub Mobile. Once you've authorized Render to be installed on your GitHub account, then the next thing you want to do is either allow all repositories to be read by Render or a set of repositories. Personally, I prefer to just choose select repositories. And in this case, I already have my daily crypto rate right there. Uh, I'm just going to come here and just add another random application. And I'm going to click on save. And once you are done, this should redirect you back to render. Back to your render dashboard, you can see a list of available repositories that you can install in render or connect to render. In this case, I want the daily crypto rate. So I'm going to click on connect. Then the next thing is to set up things like the name of the project and so on and so forth. So I'm fine with daily crypto rates one, then the branch is main, then the root directory. Now, because my application is inside of a mono repo sort of, if I click on apps, you can see that there's a Chrome extension folder and there's a Rails backend. So I need to let Render know that I want the application to be deployed from the Rails backend folder. So all I have to do is just come over here and say apps slash Rails backend. If your application is directly in the root of the repository, you don't need to do this additional step. As you can see, it even says here that it's optional. Then the next thing is your runtime. In this case, your runtime should be Ruby. And the next thing is the build command and the start command. So yeah, we're going to take this very slow. If you are running an API-only Ruby on Rails application, this configuration should work, except for instead of doing this, we probably want to do bin slash Rails server. After setting the start command, the next thing you want to do is choose your instance type. In this case, I'll be going for the free version, which is $0 per month. Then the next thing we have to do is set our environment variables. If you have custom environment variables in your application, this is the point where you are going to add them. However, Ruby on Rails itself needs a special environment variable that you need to set, and it is known as the Rails master key. Now, there are different ways to generate the value for your Rails master key. However, your Rails master key is also available inside of your application. So for example, if I open an instance of my application and I come over to the Rails backend, then I go into config, you can see that there is a master.key, right? And there is a credentials.yml.enc. You can just come over here and copy this master.key, right? And just put that in there pastes and you should pretty much be ready to create a web service now on create web service the application is building now give it a sec so the build is successful now then up next is the deployment And it says your service is live. So if I click on this URL, open link in new tab. Let's see if it's returned some result. Yeah, so it says last updated and the rate it returns an empty object, which is exactly the behavior that I expect. Now, 
There is one more thing that you need to know. If I come over to the settings over here, right, and I come over to the build command and I click on edit, remember that the application that I deployed is an API only Rails application. This would not work for a full fledged Rails application that has some UI that you have to display and so on and so forth. So, in order to be able to deploy that kind of application, I'm going to, there are a couple of more commands that you need to add in here. So I'll come over here and I'm going to come over to bin, then uh, render build.sh, then I'm going to add these two commands. So if you come over here, so you just need to add these two commands. Uh, just do and, bundle exec rails assets compile and, bundle exec rails assets clean. These are basically commands that are going to run before the server gets started. Another alternative is to simply put all of this into a render build.sh, right? And just comment out all of these guys, right? And just put all the commands in there. However, you also need to make this script executable. So you just need to come into cd slash apps slash rails backend. In your, your own application, you definitely would not have to do that and just do change mode plus X and say render build dot sh bin cd bin. Then just click this guy and this guy can now be executed. Then in your build configuration, you just need to come over here and just say dot bin slash render uh sl that slash render build dot sh safe changes and deploy your application i think are going to work as expected do let me know what you think about the video in the comment section was it helpful or a total waste of your time do subscribe so that you can get more videos from me like and of course don't forget to build like a boss cheers for now